Alright everyone, thanks for coming back. We have just one more section to talk about in this video. Um, we talked about the coverings of the brain. We talked about cerebral spinal fluid and where it's made and how it travels throughout the um, uh, throughout the ventricles of the brain and through the subarachnoid space and how it re-enters the venous blood supply. But there's one more protective feature that the brain has, and that's something that's called the blood-brain barrier. And if we take a look at this picture here, the brain tissue is gray, and we have epithelial cells that are shown in red, and those are the cells that are going to make the tiny capillaries that are going to surround the brain. And then um, we have um, uh, neurons, uh, that are adjacent to it, as well as astrocytes. Remember that astrocytes are a type of neuroglia that are going to regulate the different kinds of materials that uh, leave the blood and get to enter the neurons that are um, that they are in charge of. And then the last one is the yellow parasite, and the pericyte is responsible for the formation of blood vessels, and it's also going to help regulate which immune cells get to enter the brain and which of them have to stay out. And the reason for that is because um, immune system cells, if they can release some chemicals that are pretty harsh, um, and they are required in order to call help to an area of infection but if they're they're doing that in the brain and if they happen to be wrong they could unnecessarily cause some damage to the brain tissue so we have the parasites here in order to help us regulate those different kinds of cells um, these cells will also help to maintain the bbb the blood brain barrier Okay, so here's the thing. Our brain tissue is really sensitive and very small changes can really change the way that our brain functions. Um, I mean, and maybe you've seen somebody who has diabetes or who has hypoglycemia and, you know, if their uh, blood sugar gets too high, they can go on, they can become unconscious. And if it goes too low, they can start to become maybe combative or even go unconscious as well. So um, things like glucose and ion concentrations, they need to remain constant um, in order for impulses, um, for action potentials, which are generated down our axons to actually occur. Um, and we need to make sure also that our uh, neurons get enough amino acids and other molecules so that they can create the neurotransmitters necessary to propagate action potentials. And so their function is just to separate the neurons from blood-borne substances. Um, and like I said, immune factors can definitely damage our nerve tissue. Um, so the structure of the blood-brain barrier is unique in that it contains the least permeable capillaries in our bodies. That is the most important feature, which means that we have um, epithelial cells that make tight junctions with each other so that they adhere to each other very, very tightly. So it's um, there's very low risk of blood or other kinds of harmful molecules that are able to leak out of them because they are so tightly bound together. Um, another feature is that they ha we have astrocytes, and the astrocytes are going to be really picky about what can exit the blood and come into the nervous tissue. Um, let's see, um, there are very few water-soluble substances that can pass through. Um, water, glucose, and amino, amino acids are allowed to go through, but things like urea, toxins, um, proteins, most drugs, um, they're not going to be able to go through, and potassium ions are actively kicked out. Um, from the brain tissue and the, there it's not allowed um, there at all so again we want the impulses to be generated um, 
in a certain way. And if we have too much potassium surrounding those neurons, we're going to knock out the concentration gradient and action potentials aren't going to be able to be fired. And, and if that happens, I mean, everything stops. So that's a really important feature uh, thing, responsibility for the blood brain barrier. Um, however, uh, different kinds of lipids, um, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, other fat soluble molecules like um, uh, vitamin K, alcohol, um, anesthetics, um, all of those things are able to pass through the blood brain barrier. So it's not completely impermeable, but um, it is definitely going to limit uh, what items can actually reach our neurons. And then this is just talking about what the parasites actually do. And these are like the little feet of our astrocytes they, that are very, in very close contact with our um, blood vessels here. Uh, and so uh, the way that glucose gets through is actually interesting. It has to be actively transported across the barrier using very specific proteins. Um, but uh, oxygen, like I said, and carbon dioxide, hormones, um, other nonpolar molecules like lipids, they're able to get through without a problem. And in this picture, I just want you to notice that you can see the tight junctions that are kind of like knitting the cells together to ensure that they are very impermeable. There are only some things that can get out of the um, capillaries in the brain. And that's it, you guys. Thank you so much. I hope you learned something and that you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.